Hello everybody. Now we've talked about what is pseudocode in our previous video. Let's talk about how we're going to create our first pseudocode example. As with most things, if you've ever done any type of program before, you've probably seen a hello world. Well, we're going to do the same thing in pseudocode. Now, if you haven't done this in any type of coding language before, let me explain really quick what it's there for you to do. Hello world is the world's easiest program to write. All we want to do is print something to the screen that says, hello world. You might say, well, why would we do that? Well, it lets us know we can open up our editor, execute our code, and any possible steps that might be in between there. And it's so simple that it makes it so where we almost can't write a mistake in our code. That way we make sure everything's set up right. Now, we don't actually run pseudocode. It's not an application, okay? But it's great to test our logic. And so we're just going to start the same way to make sure we get it all set up. Now, pseudocode rules are very, very up to you. There is no hard, fast rules. Now, some places you might go say, hey, you have to do. That's not really the case. That's their rules. Pseudocode is designed to be very flexible. It's designed to be able to do it in any way that's easy for you while still being understandable to other people. So let's take a look at what something like that would look like. I'm going to come over right here and as I mentioned before, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code just because it's real easy. I open up a new document. It's untitled. It says select a language, but if I just start to type, it will go away. So don't worry about that real quick. And what I need to do is I want to output something to the screen. So I'm typically going to say something like print and in quotes, because this is a literal string, I'm just going to say, hello world. And then I'm done. Now, some places I have seen, just like with a flow chart, once you have a start and a end program, or sometimes just end. And that's totally up to you, okay? Whatever you want to be as clean and simple as possible. If you think it needs to start and end, you put it there. If you don't, then don't. Flexibility while maintaining readability to other people is the core component of pseudocode. As long as you keep that in mind, you're going to do a okay with this. So here we go. And we can kind of play computer and say, okay, we're going to start. We're going to print out hello world. Is it printing to a screen, to a web page? I don't really care at this point. I haven't defined that, so I'm not worried about that. And once it's done printing, we get to the end and we exit out. I'm okay with that. It's very simple. And that's the whole idea of the pseudocode, trying to be really simple for our first example. Let's make sure we get it right. Now, what if we want to make it more complicated? Check out this next video. That's going to be all about how do we create the same idea, but using variables and concatenating information together.